It's getting worse, folks. Donald Trump's decline is even more apparent. He went on Fox earlier in the morning. He was asked a question uh, in a pre-recorded video question by a kid. Hey, what's your favorite farm animal? And then Donald Trump responds, Vice President Kamala Harris will prevent cows from existing. Here, play the clip. What's your favorite farm animal? Favorite farm animal. <laughs> What's the <that> animal? <laughs> well, this guy you know, grew up in the city. <laughs> I'll tell you what I love. I love cows. But if we go with Kamala, you won't have any cows anymore <laughs> because you're not allowed. I don't want to ruin right. this kid's uh, day. But I love cows. I think they're so cute and so beautiful and so productive. But according to Kamala, who's a radical left lunatic, you will not have any right. cows anymore. So Thereafter, Donald Trump says that he is a very stable genius. Play the clip. Working, uh, I am the most stable human being. Remember they said uh, a stable genius. I am the most stable <laughs> human being. I've been doing this for a long time. One of the things that lots of people were pointing out to me about this interview is it appeared that Donald Trump was sitting on uh, an incontinence bed pad on the white couch. I don't think that's actually what it is. I do think that it's his suit, but he definitely has this these bizarre long suits draping, but some people disagree with me. I do think that that's his suit, but some people think it's a washable incontinence bed pad. Um, anyway, um, do you remember though, when Donald Trump was in office, I just wanted to give you this quick flashback and he told a seven-year-old that Santa didn't exist, just randomly. Here, play this clip. Well, that's really good. And you just have a good time. Are you still a believer in Santa? Because at seven, it's marginal, right? <laughs> well, you just uh, enjoy yourself. Then in the interview on Fox, Donald Trump is given another softball question to try to appeal to Nikki Haley voters. And Donald Trump responds about how badly she lost to him. Play this clip. There's a segment of, a, 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 of the Republican Party that likes Nikki Haley, and they are reluctant to jump into your column. She wants to help. She said, if he calls me, I'm there. You, she, you guys used to be tight. In the last 18 days, will you call her and say, come out yeah, with me? Yeah, I'll do what I have to do. But let, let me just tell you, Nikki Haley and I fought. And I beat her by 50, 60, 90 points. I beat her in her own state yeah. by numbers that nobody's ever been beaten by. I beat Nikki badly. I beat everyone else too badly. Then Donald Trump admits that uh, it was actually writers from Fox who wrote Donald Trump's speech for that Al Smith dinner the night before where Donald Trump was like cursing in front of priests. He acknowledges that Fox is actually writing his speeches for him now. Listen to yourself. Listen for yourself. Play it. You know, we have seen historically a lot of Democrats, they turn to the guys at Saturday Night Live or The Tonight Show. They write all their material. Your material is real funny. Who wrote it? Who helped you with well, it? Well, I've had a lot of people helping. A lot of people, a couple of people from Fox, actually, I shouldn't say that, but they wrote some jokes. And for the most part, I didn't like any of them. Should <laughs> <I got it. laughs> we see some highlights? I thought you did great. Go ahead. Watch. And just to remind you of what went down at that Al Smith dinner, here Donald Trump, very low energy, struggle to read. And he tries to make a joke about Kamala Harris that we now know Fox actually wrote for him, but he can't actually read anymore. Just watch for yourself. Someone in the White House who can barely talk, barely put together two coherent sentences, who seems to have mental faculties of a child, it said. Then Donald Trump announces that right after this meeting, uh, this interview that he's doing on Fox this morning, um, he would go have a meeting with Rupert Murdoch where he would tell uh, Rupert Murdoch not to allow negative commercials against him for the next several uh, days until the election. Here, play this. He, acknowledging the collusion right here. Here, play this clip. Sometimes. You know what so the much. event I have now? No. A very big event. I'm going to see Rupert Murdoch. Okay. That's a big event. I don't <laughs> know if he's thrilled that I say it. Yeah, please tell, tell him. Thank you. I'm going to tell him something very simple because I can't talk to anybody else about it. Don't put on negative commercials for 21 days. Don't put them. <laughs> and don't put on their, their horrible people that come and lie. I'm going to say, Rupert, please do it this way. Right. 
And then we're going to have a victory because I and, think everyone wants that. And you're going to out it's, 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 it's a great channel that we have with Tyrus. Oh, good. That's there you go. All right, Mr. President, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Appreciate you. Thank you. Man. All yeah. right, good we're going to step aside, ladies thank and you. gentlemen. See you again. Donald Trump. Good, yeah. Then I want to show you this clip as well. The, the whole thing is insane. A kid asks Donald Trump who his favorite president is um, when he was little, when Donald Trump was a kid. Then Donald Trump says Ronald Reagan. But Donald Trump was 34 years old when Reagan was elected. Then he does his weave where he talks about trade deals and how Lincoln should have settled the Civil War and Ukraine. As Mike Rothschild says, he is not okay. Here, play this clip. And Trump, I'm Daniel and I'm 10 and I'm from Tennessee. What was your favorite president when you were little? Who was your favorite, favorite president when you were little? So I liked Ronald Reagan. I thought he was, um, look, I didn't love his trade policy. I'm a very good trade. I've made some great trade deals for us, the USMCA. Right. <laughs> that wasn't his strength, but he had a great dignity about him. Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. you could say there's our president more than any others, really any of the others. Uh, great presidents. Well, Lincoln was probably a great president, although I've always said, why wasn't that settled? You know, I'm a guy that... It doesn't make sense. We had a civil war. Well, half the country uh, left horrible. before he got there. Yeah, yeah. But you'd almost say, like, why wasn't that? As an example, Ukraine would have never happened in Russia if I were president. Israel would have never happened. October 7th would have never happened. As you know. Your nighttime bedroom temperature has a huge impact on your sleep quality. So if you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made Bed Sheets. Miracle Made Sheets are inspired by NASA and they use silver infused fabrics that are temperature regulating so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. No matter the weather, get better sleeps. I do now thanks to Miracle Made sheets. They're luxuriously comfortable and without the high price tag of other luxury brands, I think they are nicer than the sheets used by some five-star hotels. They're infused with silver that prevent up to 90 99.7% bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets, so no more gross odors. So stop sleeping on bacteria, which can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Just sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas and try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order them today, you can save 40%. And if you use our promo Midas at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep now with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas, M-E-I-D-A-S, and use the code Midas to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Then Donald Trump did a podcast interview with Dan Bongino, where Donald Trump said that he was surprised that Harvey Weinstein got schlonged. Donald Trump says he surprised Harvey Weinstein got Schlonged. Donald Trump uses the word schlong and Harvey Weinstein. Here, play this clip. But Democrats don't have to be honest. They really don't have to be honest because they're not going to, they will never be accused of anything. It's interesting. Uh, I was so amazed that Harvey Weinstein got schlonged. He got hit as hard as you can get hit because he was sort of the king of the woke, right? Yeah. And yet he got hit. And I figured that maybe. He wouldn't get hit so hard, but boy, did he get, uh, you don't know him well, I don't know him well, I, but I watched that, and it was amazing. So when they do get hit, they get hit, but that's the only one I can think of. Normally, they protect everybody. What they did with Adams, I think, is very suspect. The I heard mirror. you bring that up last night. Well, I Donald Trump also getting some other bad news in the morning. Taylor Swift made another post holding uh, a cat. Um, and she writes back in the office, hashtag Miami TS, the heiress tour. Um, and Taylor Swift is back on tour. And I think she is letting people know that she will be making sure people are registered to vote right there. 
Donald Trump is also upset at our booming economy. When we the people do well, that pisses Donald Trump off. Take a look at the front page of The Economist. The envy of the world, America's economy, a special report. And it goes into how by every objective metric that we used to use and still supposed to use to determine uh, the condition of economies, America leads the world by far. We're kicking China's ass. We're kicking Europe's ass. South America, we're the fastest growing economy right now of all G7 nations based on policies by Biden and Harris um, after Donald Trump added $8 trillion in debt. We now have inflation under control. Interest rates are coming down. Unemployment's at all time low. Manufacturing boom is taking place here. All very good metrics right now. Um, and that doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean that people aren't struggling. It doesn't mean that uh, people, uh, you know, are feeling a certain way. I, I get it, but things are going in the right direction. Um, and policies to take us forward and not back are needed. Even Fox had to acknowledge a bull market entering its third year. Dow Jones setting records, S and P setting records. The American stock market is absolutely booming. I do want to show you this as well because while Donald Trump is doing those bizarre appearances on Fox and panicking. Here's what's going on in Western Michigan, for example, where you've got United, Governors Whitmer, Shapiro, Evers, Healy, Hochul, and more stumping for Harris. Watch this. ...that are going to play an outsized role in the outcome of this election. Mm -hmm. It is Michigan. It yeah. is Wisconsin, and it is Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 I was chatting with my, some of my best friends are my fellow Democratic governors. I got to tell you. I and look, I think that people who you may not think of as traditional Harris voters, but who are now Harris voters um, and people who you may think of would have supported Trump in the past just by the way they look, but looks can be deceiving, are now out there very vocally calling out Donald Trump. Here's an individual. This went viral on TikTok. Let me show you. Let's play it. So uh, anybody care to take a swing at explaining to Mitch Donald pulling a Mitch McConnell and just whiting out on stage while Italian opera and Oliver Anthony's music played for like 45 fucking minutes this weekend? I'm telling y'all, this man's mental decline must be studied. We are watching the direct effects of Adderall and advanced dementia. This shit feels like for the last week and a half, everything that falls out of that man's mouth has been one long amphetamine and hate-fueled fever dream. Between forgetting where he's at and talking shit about the state he is currently standing in, leaving his supporters stranded in the desert, and now this shit, I don't know how any of y'all still think this motherfucker is competent. Y'all were so quick to call Biden motherfucking brain dead, yet not one of y'all will admit that this motherfucker is not right in his goddamn head. I don't know. Y'all know how this goes. Keep them motherfucking boots out your motherfucking mouth and remember that the golden rule will always remain. Yeehaw, fuck the law, and I will see y'all down the line. You know why? Because people are sick and tired of just Trump whining, and it's obvious that he's in serious cognitive decline. It's, it's apparent to us all. Here, Donald Trump says this morning, also on that podcast, that he's going to sue 60 minutes. He's upset about them. Interviewing Vice President Kamala Harris. Trump was too scared to go on 60 Minutes. Play this clip. So I think I'm going to sue them, actually. Good. Go for it. I think so. No, you know what? They can't defend it. And if they do, and even if they win, it's going to be very embarrassing. And 60 Minutes, so I've done it many times. I did it with Mike Wallace. The best one I ever had was Mike Wallace, and he was the biggest killer. And, you know, Chris tries to be Mike, but it, you just you still yeah. have to have it. Yeah, he's not cutting it. He doesn't. Uh, he's, nah, he doesn't he's not cutting it. it. But... Um, it's a very embarrassing moment for them, but the, the media is not pressing it. I also like that this clip has surfaced. Here is J.D. Vance from 2016, what he had to say about Donald Trump. Let's play it. And so one of the takeaways is not just that the Republican Party base is somehow fundamentally flawed in a way that's unique in, in American political history. It's that Trump is a really bad candidate and frankly, I think a really bad person. Finally, this is Vice President Kamala Harris from earlier in the day in her speech. Let's play it. And make no mistake, Donald Trump is no friend of labor. Let's be really clear about that. No matter what the noise is out there, he is no friend of labor. 
Just look at the record instead of his rhetoric. Look at the record. And let's not fall for the okie doke. Seriously, he encouraged automakers to move their plants out of Michigan so he could pay, they could pay their workers less. Understand what that was about. So they could pay their workers less. And when the UAW went on strike to demand the higher wages they deserved, Donald Trump went to a non-union shop and attacked the UAW. And he said, he said, striking and collective bargaining don't make, quote, a damn bit of sense. A damn bit of difference is what he said exactly. That it doesn't make a, quote, pardon my language, a damn bit of difference is what he said. <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> so Michigan, you know better. Strong unions mean higher wages, better health care, and greater dignity for union members and for everyone, whether or not you are part of a union. Get that straight. Get that straight. Which is why when I am president, I will sign the PRO Act into law and make it easier for workers to join a union and negotiate for better pay and working conditions. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 4 million together. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.